This week on Worldwide Gaming, Blood. Bloodborne is extremely fast paced. There is one shield in the game, which is intentionally useless, meaning you can't just block hits until you see an opening as you would previously. Flash mobs. Um, when you first start, there's a bunch of different loadouts and all different loadouts. And numbers. That satisfaction of being on top of the list as the best. Hello and welcome to Worldwide Gaming. I'm your host Ryan and today we're going back to E3 to tell you all about the games we saw in the Ubisoft booth. Also, Lewis has taken us back to the golden age of arcade machines in this week's WG101. Right now though, we have the forecast. A reimagining of the PS Vita hit, Tearaway Unfolded, brings the cute paper-crafted world to consoles. Taking advantage of the DualShock 4's touchpad and light, the game will have players guiding the hero around a handmade world to help them deliver their packages. The game comes out this year for PS4. Promising epic space combat and an open-ended story, Rebel Galaxy has players piloting a destroyer, an enormous ship covered head to toe in weapons. With a randomly generated universe and an emphasis on action rather than strategy, the game is coming 2015 to PC and PS4. <laughs> A remake of the 1989 game of the same name, Shadow of the Beast is a hyper-violent adventure game coming from a new studio that includes talent from such games as Need for Speed, Star Fox, Battlefield, and The Sims. The game is coming exclusively for PS4 this year. Don't be fooled by the name, Bloodborne is a Souls game. It's brutally hard, the story requires you to dig deep into internet forums and item descriptions to make any sense of it, and the enemies are as frightening for the designs as they are for their ability to annihilate you in a few hits. The gameplay is where the game really comes into its own though, to the point where Bloodborne feels like it actually encourages you to play it like a Dark Souls game, subversing your expectations of the game, with the developer's disdain for the player evident from the first death to last. The game starts with a cutscene of your hunter being involved in a blood transfusion, and that's about all you get. No explanation of why you're there, what the transfusion does, or how you even got there to start with. There aren't many more cutscenes throughout the game, and the ones there are don't often give you any details on the story. To piece together the story, you'll need to inspect items and look at environmental clues to figure out what's happening. If you're not willing to work for the story, you definitely won't know what's going on. Luckily, the story is only as important as you want it to be, and if you don't care what's happening around you, you can still play Bloodborne as a pure action game. For what it's worth, I think From Software's story is worth the effort, and at least makes you feel smart when you piece two important clues together. Setting itself apart from other Souls games, Bloodborne is extremely fast paced. There is one shield in the game, which is intentionally useless, meaning you can't just block hits until you see an opening as you would previously. Instead, Bloodborne forces you to face each foe head on and avoid attacks by dodging. This also means that you usually want to be the aggressor in most situations and land the first attack. You will usually have both a right handed weapon such as swords, blades and hammers, and a gun in the left hand. Far from turning the game into a shooter, the gun doesn't do much damage at all, and instead acts as a way to interrupt an enemy's attacks and allow for a devastating visceral attack of your own. Combat in Bloodborne will feel completely new regardless of your soul's pedigree, as it makes you change up how you play the game, especially if you typically chose the sword and shield options in previous games. Thank you. 
Of course, Bloodborne is difficult. It's the kind of game where literally any enemy you see can and will kill you. Where I found that Dark Souls 2 felt like it got too easy in the middle areas of the game, Bloodborne keeps a smooth difficulty curve throughout the game, giving you a more consistent challenge. That is except for the bosses which, if you haven't mastered the combat system, are extremely hard. Both factors combined make the game much more satisfying to play, as you know that it was because of your growth of the skills that you got through an area, not luck, brute force, or that the area wasn't very well designed. It emphasises the fact that progression in the game is based around how much you learn and adapt as a player, instead of how many points you've dumped into each stat of your character. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Unfortunately, Bloodborne does take a while to get going. During your first few hours, you'll be running around Yarnum, a very Victorian area looking town filled with mostly humans, and Old Yarnum. While the game does look brilliant, especially the lighting from fires and torches, you'll be spending so much time there that you might find yourself wishing for more variations in enemies and locations. Thankfully, you'll get some reprieve with the bosses, who are always uniquely grotesque and well designed. But as far as the environments and lower level enemies go, the game drags its feet a little. With that in mind, you should definitely stick with Bloodborne. Its faster pace, new combat systems and brilliant bosses will give you one of the most satisfying experiences you've had in a while, as long as you can stay alive.